My name is Teresa Koblack, and today I am going to walk you through everything you see on this table. So we're going to talk a little bit about it, but we're not going to make this a long drawn out video. So let's go ahead and get started. And at the end of this video, we'll go outside and I will show you how I put the sealer on my paintings. So first things first. When I am painting, I use a couple of different little trays. Sometimes I use my little trays like this. And when I go to refill them, on the back of my trays, I have them numbered. And so I can tell by the numbers. So number one is the one in the middle here. And I can tell that that's aqua. So when I go to refill this, I can tell exactly what colors I'm refilling with. And same on this one. So I keep my colors all separate. I keep greens in one, reds in one, blues in another. So that's on those trays. These ones here, these little trays, and you've seen them in my tutorials before. These little trays here are the trays that I keep in my art box. And I actually take my art box on the road with me. And I can paint um, when I'm at a show or um, at break time at work. Um, I can use my little trays. Now, the thing about using these is it does have more than one color in it and that doesn't bother me any but if you're wanting to keep your colors all separate you would probably want to tray more like this the other thing i do use is i use these little glass these are actually antique salt dishes and i use these when i'm um mostly using the pinata inks although this one here is actually flamingo and so i will put the ink in here and i can reuse this over and over and over all i'll do is dab on a little alcohol and it wakes the ink right back up now i'm going to backtrack just for a second these are antique butter dishes and I actually picked these up at the thrift store. You can see I only paid 50 cents. So those are super cool. I love them. They're ceramic and they work well for me. The other thing I use is I use a little glass bowl and I put my 99% alcohol in this. And I use this not only for cleaning my brushes, but I use it when I'm painting um, and bringing over the ink. So say I want to wake up some ink and I want to start working on a piece. What I'll do is I'll take a little bit of that alcohol, put it in the bowl, and I can take and come over here to the ink, put it in, rub it around a little, and I'm ready to go. Now, when I'm cleaning my brushes, I use my little bowl too. So a tip is when you're cleaning your brush, don't uh, smash your brush all the way to the bottom. Just take your brush and you're gonna dip it in, bring it over on your paper towel, and wipe it off. And the reason you don't want to take it all the way to the bottom is you'll end up turning your water all dirty. I'm sorry, your alcohol all dirty. So now we get a nice clean brush and ready to use again. Now, another thing I use is the Ranger's blending solution. And I usually use this when I'm starting the project just to help the ink um, grab on uh, to whatever I'm painting, whether it be ceramic or onto a piece of Yupo. I take and I put a little bit of this on and that'll just help that ink uh, grab right on. 
I also keep these bottles and I recycle them and I put my 99% alcohol in it. So those work great for that. And now I can take that and put it in with my little trays into my ink box and I'm ready to go. So let's move on to the next thing here. This is my black ink. And I have a lot of people ask me, are you painting with something else? No, I am painting with the pitch black alcohol ink made by Ranger. And what I do is I just keep this in my little, again, antique glass dish. And when I'm working it, what I will do is I will take and I'll come in to a corner and I will just take a little bit of that alcohol and just kind of liven up my inks and then I'm ready to go. So that is how I keep my black. And in turn, it makes it a little bit thicker and it helps me paint a little bit better. So that's our black. And there are more than the pinata and the jacquard. Um, there are more alcohol inks out there. These are the two that I normally use. Um, most of my paintings are probably done with the Ranger. And um, I just like their products. So um, that's a couple of the alcohol inks that I use. When I am painting on a piece of canvas, so if I'm painting, whether it's a pre-stretched canvas or a uh, canvas that I'm stretching myself, what you need to do with the inks is you need to put down a base coat. And I found that you can use a few different things and so it's totally up to you. I have used the gloss varnish and I have put this down on my canvas and I usually do two or three coats. I let it dry in between coats and it just really helps that ink glide across there. I've also used the kilns and this works really good too. And I've also used gesso so you can pick up the gesso. This is just the Artist Loft, which is the Michaels brand. And it works just as good as any of the other brands I've found to be. So that is if you're going to paint on canvas. So another thing here is I have this little brush here. And he's really not a brush. He's more like a sponge. And so he's uh, fantastic. And he comes with um, a group of five or six. I can't remember which. Now what works nice about this is you can dip it into your alcohol. And then I'll rub some down on my paper towel. And I can go into a painting and just pull out some of that color if I want. So um, if I'm wanting to get into a detailed area, he does have the nice pointy tip. Now, if you can't pick any of these up, the other thing that works great is a Q-tip. And what I do on my ends is I peel the end off. And I take and I dip it into the alcohol and I just give it a rub on my finger so that it brings that cotton all together. And then I'll use this when I'm trying to pull out some of that ink. So this works good for me too. I have had um, some of the viewers tell me there are uh, the pointed Q-tips, but I found this works good for me. And, you know, if it works, you know, don't fix it. So if you like the pointed ones, you use those. Then we're going to talk about 
um, the brushes that I use. If you've watched any of my tutorials, you see I use brushes on a lot of my tutorials. So these ones here, I have a whole little group of them. And so they are different sizes that I have. These are the Princeton brushes. And again, you know, you just have, it's kind of trial and error and see what you like best. I've had pretty good luck on these brushes, but I will say the other day I was out at the craft store and I picked me up some new brushes. So I've been using these for about a week now and believe it or not, these are made by Artist Loft. And I don't want to spend a lot of money on brushes because the alcohol eventually eats away at them. And so I just started using these. I like them so far. Again, I've only been using them for a week. So I'll let you know in the future how these are going. Another thing you can use when doing your alcohol ink paintings is you can use any kind of alcohol-based marker. So these ones here are a Sharpie, and these ones here are the Copic or Copic markers. And on these ones here, these are the brush tip Sharpies, and I like them because they do paint like a paintbrush. And I can actually use this on the painting and then come in with my paintbrush, the alcohol, and make that work. Now, I have had some viewers ask me about it fading or changing colors. I haven't had too much problem, although I don't use a lot of these. I use them more for little areas that I can't get in. Um, I'll even use the uh, smaller little fine tip points or the ultra fine tip uh, when I can't get into a certain area these work great so that's on those and then I'm going to tell you about a few of the surfaces that you can paint on so when you're painting with the alcohol inks you can paint on any non-porous surface so you can paint on glass, you can paint on plastic, you can paint on ceramic, you can paint on metal. So, you, you know, the possibilities are endless with this. And that's why it makes the alcohol ink so much fun. That, and you can pick up a bottle of alcohol ink for a reasonable price, or you can get it at the craft store in a three-pack for a reasonable price. So what I have painted on before is the Yupo paper. Now this paints really nice. Uh, the Yupo paper works really well. And um, the Yupo paper is made out of plastic. So it's a plastic paper. And this works great. These are five by sevens. These are actually by Ranger. And these are a couple other pieces that you can paint on. Now, these are in the craft section. Uh, you can find these at your local craft store. And um, you can pick these up. Like I said, they'll be where the inks are. And your inks work real well on these also. So this is a silver brush paper. And then this one is the silver sparkle. I've done lots of paintings on this one. It's nice because it gives it a shimmery look. It makes it really different. Now, on this one, uh, the matte, it, uh, matte black, I've only used the pearls. So it's the alcohol ink pearls. That is all I've painted on this. I haven't used the regular inks. I'm using the alcohol ink pearls. And let me see if I can grab a bottle to show you. 
course, when you want something, you don't see it. So we'll just keep going here. So you can paint the alcohol ink pearls onto this paper here. Then another thing you can paint on is these here are art panels. And these ones are actually made by Ranger. And this is a three pack that you can get. And um, these are pretty cool too. And actually at the end of this video, uh, we'll go ahead and do a spray sealer on one of the art panels. Um, spray sealer on one of the art panels. Uh, so you can paint on this just like if you were painting on the Yupo. The nice thing about these art panels uh, from Ranger, it is double-sided. So if you mess up on one side and you can't get all the ink off, then you can go ahead and flip it over and paint on the other side. But I have found that you can take the 99% alcohol and clean it down and then go ahead and paint on it again. So the last thing on our agenda here is I have a lot of viewers ask me, do you seal your work? Yes, I seal all of my work, whether I'm painting on Yupo paper or the art panel, I seal all of it. So the first thing I'll do is I'll seal it with the varnish. And you can see I do put the numbers on here. Now these are both marked two because one is gloss and the other is matte. Now this is a UV uh, protector. So this is gonna help keep the color uh, on your artwork because you wanna keep that color there. You're painting with such a bright awesome color you want to keep it so what we will do is we paint uh, paint our picture let it dry for i let mine dry for a couple days you can let it dry for a day um you want it totally dry so try you know try just waiting a day or two and then seal it so at the end here, what we'll do is we'll go outside and we're going to put a quick, quick coat of the varnish. I'll show you how I do that. Then what we'll have to do is let it dry before we put the UV. So I'm going to show you how to put this one on. And then what you'll do is the next day or at least a couple hours later, you can go ahead and put the UV on. So we're not going to do that today. So you'll just put the Carmen varnish on, let it set, dry. Once it's completely dry, then you can go back and you do the UV. So I think I pretty much walked you through everything. Let's go outside and spray down a painting. I'll show you how and hopefully it will be helpful to you. All right, see you in a minute. Okay, here we are outside and I have my painting placed on a piece of cardboard. And what we're going to do is we're going to give a small spray of the Carmen varnish and we're just gonna lightly do this. So I've already shaken the can. And when I spray, I'm just gonna go back and forth really lightly. So you're gonna watch me do this now. And I'm just lightly spraying across. And then we're gonna come back and we're gonna give it one more coat. And then what I'd like to do is I kind of get down and look and make sure the whole surface is covered. And it is, so I'm going to leave it be. 
Now, if you're here in Michigan or in a colder climate like I am, it's cold today. I'm not going to kid you. It's cold. So I gave it a quick spray and now I'm going to take it in and I'll put it into a room where nobody's going to be breathing the chemicals and just seal it off from rest of the house. But I bring it outside to spray it so that we're not having those chemicals in the house. Anyways, uh, sorry about the wind chimes ringing. It is a little windy here today in Michigan. I hope this tutorial was helpful to you. Again, my name is Teresa Kovlak, and you can find my um, more of my work on Facebook or Instagram. And um, give me a thumbs up. That lets me know that you enjoyed this tutorial and you'd like to see more to come. And I will have a list of the products that I use down in the description box. And I do try to get to your uh, questions and comments. So please leave them below. It might take me a little bit of time, but I will get to them. Again, thanks for joining me and happy painting.